Hello one and all, welcome back to another video here on the Brugly channel. In this video, I will be showing you 10 of the most horrifying, toe-curlingly deadly, and disturbing backrooms levels that you've ever seen. These levels are so unnerving that you never will want to explore or experience them, except while watching this. These are the worst of the worst. They have the deadliest layouts, the worst effects, and sometimes the worst entities as well. And if you get a nightmare or two while watching this video, it's not my fault. Please sign here to accept the terms and conditions of this video. Anyways, thank you for clicking on this video and your amazing support. I love and appreciate you all. And I will see you at the end of the video. Let's get into it, shall we? So first up, the document starts with an exploration log that was found on this level. The log is between two explorers and the two people are wandering through the woods of the level when they come across an apple tree. But the apple tree just looks off to them. It's bigger than apples from real life and it's leaking some kind of strange juice. Thinking nothing is wrong, one wanderer just bites into the apple and after that, they knew that they did the wrong thing. The apple tastes off, and it starts leaking that weird substance. The wanderer then starts to convulse and to purge repeatedly. She falls down and her skin starts to split apart, and her bones start to shift and multiply into multiple legs and arms. Her face starts to morph and distort, and she grows pincers and legs. The other wanderer that she was with watches in horror at what's happening to their friend, and freaks out because their friend just turned into some kind of human centipede creature. So he drops his apple, runs away as fast as possible, and he's almost in the clearing until he trips. And you can guess what the centipede does next. So yeah, that was the intro log. What a great way to start off the level. You know, I definitely wanna go there now. It seems really safe. Now it's time for the level description. Level 65 of the back rooms is the 66th level. And it's been classified as a class four difficulty, being very unsafe, very unsecure, with a medium dangerous entity count. The level itself has been split into five specific parts. The main area, the apple trees, the mouths, the centipedes, and the stump. So first I'm gonna explain the main area so you can kind of get a sense of what we're dealing with. Level 65 is a constantly foggy and misty forest that has a bunch of different types of trees scattered throughout it. The trees seem to all be a reddish color and their leaves are also dark red. Across this forest landscape, a thick, humid fog stagnates through the level, which makes it really hard to see out in front of you or really hard to see above you. There's no other weather besides a cool breeze that blows through the forest which keeps the temperature at a nice, chill, fall-like temperature. The trees inside this level are not regular trees uh, because they seem to be carnivorous, as in they literally eat meat. What kind of meat do they eat, you might ask? Well, it's specifically the meat of individuals who don't make it out of the level. Their corpses being absorbed into the ground by the tree's roots. So far, we have giant centipedes, weird poisonous apples, and carnivorous trees. Nice. Speaking of the ground though, it's littered with red leaves and those oversized centipedes, some of which have been measured to be over six feet long, which is totally not horrific. No, it's totally fine. Anyways, that's the main part of the level, a red colored misty forest with cannibal trees. Now I'm gonna talk about the apple tree section. So the blood apple trees on this level manifest themselves evenly in evenly spaced rows. Each row is approximately 15 feet apart from the other row. And from the outside perspective, they just look like an apple orchard with red trees and apples, nothing too crazy. But it's when you start looking at the actual apples that you notice something is off. The apples on the trees are very anomalous, and, and like I said, they seem to leak this red, vicious liquid. The liquid is very similar to stuff that comes out of our veins, but it's thought to be from animals. But just know that you should never eat any apples that you find on this level. Don't touch or bite or lick the apples because what you saw in the log, what would happen. You'll start to turn sick and you'll start convulsing and you'll eventually crack yourself into a centipede shape and then you'll be a person, but you'll also be a centipede. Pretty scary to think about, to be honest. But once a person eats an apple or touches an apple and starts to purge and throw up, that's when they're completely lost and they can't be saved, no matter how hard you try. 
Not even almond water could save them there. The next part of the level is the mouths. Yes, the mouths. These are really rare areas in the ground of the level that look like large, fleshy pits. They're around nine feet in diameter, and they're an unknown depth, and they take the appearance of a circle, and it looks like a mouth. From far off, the openings just look like cave openings, but when you get closer, you'll notice that the mouths are covered in a flesh-like material, and sometimes you can see bits of matter swirling down their esophaguses, or esophagi, if you want to be fancy. Now, it's obvious that you shouldn't go near these mouths unless you want to fall in and never be seen again. The origin and the purpose of these fleshy pits are unknown, but there are some theories that have emerged that could explain them. One theory is that the level feeds directly through these mouths, and just like the trees that feed from the ground here, they soak in human bodies into themselves uh, to somehow fuel the level. Others think that the level is some sort of giant super creature, and the mouths are just openings to its insides. Either way, it is pretty disgusting to see a biological mouth in the ground, in the woods. That is pretty terrifying. Some other weird things have happened surrounding the mouths as well. A common occurrence is to hear screaming coming from inside the mouths. Now, the screaming is either disembodied or it could be from somebody who fell in. We don't know, but hearing echoing screams through flesh mouths in the middle of the woods is definitely nightmare fuel. So moving on past the mouths to the next part of the level, which is the centipedes. Now, these can be normal sized, like a few inches long to, like I said, up to six feet long, and they are very aggressive entities. They'll chase you the second they see you. They're also very quick and they can climb things, uh, so you're pretty much screwed if one sees you. In a gross twist of fate, some wanderers have actually managed to unalive a centipede in self-defense, and they've noticed that the inside of the centipede, inside of the skin, is a full human skeleton in the shape of a centipede that's been morphed into that shape, which is absolutely disgusting. But I guess it makes sense because it happens when you eat the apple and that red juice inside of it. Again, it is unknown how this happens, why it happens, or the biological process into how the humans transition into centipedes and how the bones crack to take the shape. We just don't know. All we know is that it's extremely dangerous to encounter these creatures. The last part of the level is known as the stump which in and of itself is a very deep area inside the level. It looks like a cleanly cut black stump that has a bunch of anomalies that surround it. For example, when you get close to said stump, you'll experience sensory issues and things will start to look distorted and broken. You'll be really disoriented and you'll start to panic. After this, you'll begin to hear auditory hallucinations and see visual hallucinations pop in and out of your peripheral vision. And of course, literally, no one knows why this happens, but some people have even reported seeing silhouettes of dark human figures crawl out of the ground near the stump when the hallucinations start. Again, it's not known if it's a hallucination or if there are actual shadow creatures there. But when these hallucinations start, everything around you begins to turn a deep crimson red. The trees become black silhouettes, and everything becomes this derealization effect of this red horror. So if you encounter the stump, the best thing you can do is to instantly run the opposite way so you don't get trapped in its circumference of hallucinations. The stump itself seems to call wanderers to it and kind of lure them its way, which is why it's really hard to escape once you're there. Because of these attributes, this has led people to believe that the stump is sentient somehow, or maybe the core of the level. Other than a few theories, no one knows why the stump does this, or how it does this. It's just one of those things in the back rooms that we'll never understand. To enter this level, you can walk through a pair of wooden gates on any outdoor backrooms level. And to exit, you have to do the same thing, and you have to find a wooden gate tucked away deep into the level. Just make sure it's not near a tree, or a mouth, or a stump, or a centipede. Actually, just make sure it's not near anything, because you probably want to make it out alive, right? This level was actually really good, and it's actually one of my favorites in a long time. You know, the dark liminality of the woods, mixed with the horror of the centipedes, and the mouths, and the apples, mixed with the psychological aspects of the stump, it makes this entire thing really good. 
Level 73 of the Backrooms, or the Redlands, as it's been nicknamed, is a level that is extremely dangerous, and I cannot state that enough. It is extremely dangerous. It's been given a class 5 difficulty for being unsafe and unsecure and infested with scary entities. And I'll get into all the entities later on. In fact, the first single line on this document says, quote, do not go searching for level 73, end quote. But let me tell you all about it anyway, so you can figure out why you should never search for it. The level's article was written and uploaded from deep inside a castle that's located in the middle of this level. The people that wrote the article, they ventured through the various parts of this level to get to their current location, so they have pretty decent knowledge of what the level looks like and the dangers that lie within, and their description of what the level looks like is what I'll be going over in this video. Level 73 is the 74th level inside the back rooms. It's most commonly known amongst wanderers as the Redlands because of its dark, red-stained grass and sky features. The level takes place on some sort of island with a large ocean surrounding it. The island as of right now is the only accessible and searched through part of the level since the ocean part around it has not been explored yet, apparently the water should not be touched or entered at all due to deadly aquatic anomalies. But the island part of the level is so hard to explore and it's just a very volatile place to be, mainly due to the entities that call this place home. The island itself is a dark red grassy island in the shape of a large circle. Scattered across the island along the red grass are trees and small shrubs that look dead and decayed. The trees and the grass and the shrubs all are circling the island and in the middle of this circle is a large stone castle. Now the entity density on this level is estimated to be one entity per 35 square feet. Let me repeat that one thing every 35 feet. So pretty much there's going to be constantly entities around you somewhere in your eyesight. But I'm sure you're asking, you know, what kind of creatures actually live here? Why is it so dangerous? There are smilers, death moths, clumps, dullers, hounds and skin stealers and camo crawlers. Even death rats have been seen jumping through the grass. These are the most commonly reported ones, but those are just to name a few. There are also strange unknown creatures that have been documented to be here, like strange tall skinny humanoids that run ridiculously fast, like 50 miles an hour, and just snatch up wanderers without even seeing what they are. Again, no idea what they are, but now you know about them. Obviously, all those entities are dangerous in their own right, so when you get sent to this level, the second your feet hit the ground, you need to run as fast as you can through the field to get to the castle. Level 73 is pretty much in a perpetual state of darkness, and there's no day or night cycle whatsoever. The only light you actually have here is a full moon that casts this reddish glow across the cloudy sky. The moon itself never moves and never changes in its light intensity, giving the sky this fake, uncanny type of vibe. Now, right under what I just said, there's a sentence that states this. You do not want to use an artificial light source and that you do not want to see at all until you get to the doors of the castle. And I'm sure as you can tell, being on an island with entities, you don't want to turn a flashlight on because that would just signal that you're there. Like a moth to a flame, you know, they would just run at you and devour you. But I love how it says you do not want to see because that's, that's so scary, you know? If you can't see, then I'm sure the entities can't see as well. But the second you turn that flashlight on, they'll swarm you and they can see you. So like I said, you get here, your feet hit the ground, you sneak around and run in a straight line until you get to that castle. The silhouette of the castle is visible the second you get here, it's shrouded in that reddish moonlight glow. And it is imperative that you do not deviate or move from a straight line and that you do not stop running because of the entities. When, and more likely if, you do reach the doors of the castle, you need to bang on them as loud as you can, and then it'll like automatically open up for you. It's unknown if the castle is an entity itself, or if it just has sentience, or somebody's watching, we don't know. The castle has been named the Silver Castle, and it is the only known building on this red island. The way it was built, or who made it, is unknown, but it's a rather expansive, gothic-style castle that is fully furnished and fully lit with candles and stuff like that. The castle has cold stone hallways and rooms with beds and huge halls and that kind of thing, 
And overall, it's pretty lavishly decorated for being in the middle of an entity infested island. It even has a main dining hall and these six huge bedroom areas. There are three floors to the castle and an attic area all of which are accessible except the attic. And that's because a level exclusive creature made that area off limits. But I'll talk about that in a second. There are windows that look out to the island from inside the castle, but the article says, do not look outside in big bold letters. So I'm assuming you should listen to that. There are fresh water wells and barrels of food and grains located in the kitchen area here. And overall, it seems to be a place that you can stay for a while and relax. Even though there's you know horrifying things happening outside, you can chill inside here. Now that level exclusive entity that I mentioned lives inside this castle and its name is Koran or Koran or Koran. C-O-R-A-N is how it's spelled. He is a large entity in a humanoid shape that is very muscular. He has thick black hair and two two horn-like appendages sticking out of his head. One of his arms is gone, and in its place is a chain that is just shoved into his stub, which sounds pretty dope, I'm not gonna lie. He's very nice to wanderers, and he seems to be a protector in a way. Now, in a morbid twist of fate, he's missing both his eyes due to a large scratch across his face that he got from fighting off an entity. So instead, he wears a black bandana around the missing eyes. Apparently, his goal is to eradicate all entities on this level, which is pretty cool, but I think somebody might need to help bro out. I mean, it's like one versus 5,000 right now. I don't know if he's doing very effective stuff. If you want to enter this horrific level for some reason, whether you're crazy, whether you lost your mind, or whether you just want to put this level as a notch on your belt, some have reported being on level 14 or level 6 and no clipping into this field here, randomly. But remember, if you do no clip into the field, you have to run in a straight line to the castle. And do not hesitate, do not deviate, run. And to exit, this is where it gets pretty sad because you simply cannot. There has not been an exit found, and I'm sure if someone finds it, they'll, they'll put it on the website, but as of right now, you either will get consumed by the Entity Horde, or you will live out your days in the castle. Backrooms level 909 is called Sensory Deprivation, and it's not for the reason you think. You'll see why later, but it's not just its quiet level, trust me. It's classified as a class 5 difficulty, and it's because it's unsafe, it's because it's unsecure, and it's because it's infested with entities. In reality, it's just one entity, and not actually an infestation, but it's bad. The level is mysterious, and the exact layout and the exact description of it is unknown to pretty much everybody. Partially because the first sentence of the level document says, quote, Level 909, hostile, file trunicated for protection, end quote. So whatever the original information was, or whatever the internet used to have, level 909 is pretty much unknown as of right now. However, I will be getting into some theories and my thoughts on what this level is, and if you want to stick around for that, I highly suggest it. But firstly, I want to get into the two short paragraphs that we have that describe the level, and they read as follows. Getting sent to this level is actually 100% a way to seal your fate. You will not make it out of this level at all. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that before I read the paragraph. This is genuinely, and I mean genuinely your last warning, click off if you get squeamish. The following quote from the level describes what will happen if someone does get sent here. Quote, information about the level devoured violently. Observers reported forcible removal of eyes, ears, nose, tongue, performed by undisclosable entity. Victims remain conscious after mutilation, end quote. So, uh, yeah. Remember how I said this level was nicknamed Sensory Deprivation? You probably thought it was because it was some sort of deprivation tank, like in real life, where there's no sounds or light. But, uh, no, this level's called Sensory Deprivation because the entity that controls it removes all your senses, forcibly, while you're alive and while you're conscious. It mutilates your body and forces you to feel every ounce of pain possible. Hello everybody, I'm just popping in for a quick two announcements. Don't click off the video, this will be really fast. Number one. I have a podcast channel with a bunch of other YouTubers. It's called the Nightmare Blunt Rotation. We just hit a thousand subscribers, so go check out that channel. If you want to see me and some other guys get into some stuff, a bunch of other cool YouTubers on there, just go check it out. Second announcement, Spoogly is about to hit 100K. Spoogly, my third channel, guys, is about to hit 100,000 subscribers. 
Thank you all so much for the support on that channel. If you don't know about it, I would recommend just go checking it out. I dive like really deep into disturbing and dark topics over there, and I really think you're gonna enjoy it. If you want more like me content, that's like a serious channel where I do deep dives and documentaries. I think you'll like it. That's all I got for you. Spoogly 100K, my podcast channel. Go check them both out in the description below. The last thing I want to say is just have a great day. Make sure you don't stress over things that you can't control. And make sure you tell somebody that you love them. All right? But yeah, I will see you at the end of the video as well. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Somehow, though, the next paragraph of the level might be worse than the first one. Quote, Received transmission from victims. Wet undulation. Scraping. Post-consumption, communication smell of blood and ozone, tastes coppery, dental growths considered abnormal, report immediately, end quote. Reading that was literally like nails on a chalkboard for me, I'm not gonna lie, that was actually disgusting. The process of all this pain is just wet and squelchy, and you can smell the rot and iron from yourself while it's happening. Now, a couple of audio recordings have been made of whatever this is happening to you, and you're going to hear that throughout the video, you're going to hear some now, but the following is the scraping noises that have been recorded. The scraping sound is always to be able to hear because this level is thought to be, you know, pitch black. And the scraping sound itself is your meat getting stripped off the bones, if you know what I'm saying. Again, while you're all conscious. The other interesting thing from that second paragraph is when it says, quote, dental growths considered abnormal. Now that's pretty interesting because as the paragraph said, the entity will remove your tongue. So it seems like the appendages from the entity will infect your mouth with something when it reaches in to grab your tongue and rip it out. Maybe bacteria can infect your gums and cause tumors to grow or something. I don't know, that's disgusting and somehow makes it even worse. So those two are the only paragraphs that we have about the level at all. And then underneath those two paragraphs, we get a link and a picture to the entity that does all this stuff to all the poor souls that get trapped in level 909. It's a pretty scary jump scare, I will say, and the image actually caught me off guard at first. I was writing the script at midnight and my brightness was all the way up on my laptop and it kind of just jumped out at me. Anyways, this is what it looks like. A fleshy, mucusy, red looking lump. What seems to be three appendages with teeth sticking out from it. It's absolutely disgusting to look at and it's even more gross when you realize that it uses those appendages to remove your senses. The entity does not have a name, and it doesn't have any lore behind it, but its actions and what it does to people who get sent here speak for itself, I think, and that gives it all the lore it needs. It also seems to physically consume all information that gets leaked about this level, and that's what the first paragraph meant when it said that all information about the level is devoured violently. The entity somehow consumes it physically. Of course, this is done through an unknown means, and that's also the reason that there's so little information about it. We have no real idea of anything about it. Just that one snapshot, what it might look like, and that's it. It does seem to have full control over the level's physical parts, though, and it can subdue wanderers who get sent there and then remove all their senses. It also seems to be confined to the level, which is nice. But there are no methods, as of right now, on how to survive the level, how to enter it, how to exit it, or any information like that. There's none available, since the creature physically eats all of it. But since that's all we have, I do want to get into some theories on what the level might look like and what the entity might look like. In the picture of the entity that we have, we can see that the surroundings of it are dark. What seems to be a black wall right behind the creature. This, along with the name of the level, would imply that it's a very dark, very desolate place. I'm kind of thinking something like level 6, meaning that it's pitch black, and I would venture to say that level 909 is a labyrinth of hallways that are pitch black and have no natural light. I also assume that when you first get sent to this infinite dark labyrinth, you won't be able to see or hear anything, and you won't even know that there's an entity in this level until you hear its squelching and its breathing sounds getting closer to you. And once you hear those breathing sounds and those groanings, that's when you know you're not alone. And that's when the entity will hold you down and remove your senses and you'll be stuck here in this infinite liminal black maze 
where no one can hear your screams and no one can end the suffering. But that's just my theory. I mean, who really knows? It is unknown what the entity does to the victims after he takes away these senses, quote unquote, but it's assumed he keeps them alive as some sort of sick and twisted game. Maybe he has dinner with him. I don't know. Let me know your theories in the comments. Your guess is as good as mine, but we can only come up with some information because there's just two paragraphs and that one picture. That's all we have. So who knows? But my theory is that the level is a pitch black, van to black almost, hallway and room system where this entity lives and there's no light, no sounds or nothing, and you won't even know that he's there until you hear those grotesque squelching and breathing sounds coming from further down the hallway, closer and closer, until he grabs you and starts ripping off your nose and eyes and ears and tongue. In the discussion part of the article where people can post stuff, the author linked a couple image sources that say what the entity might look like, and these are the those images. One is of a bunch of these fish with small sharp teeth, and the other is some sort of reaper with a bunch of wet stuff on his mask. So I guess the entity is some sort of mashup between the reaper and then these sharp fish appendages as its arms that physically eat away at your senses bit by bit. Either way, it's absolutely awful to think about a level existing that's this gross and this horrible to get trapped in. I genuinely think it's probably one of the top three worst ways to go out in the back rooms and, and die even though it actually take a while to unalive since the entity keeps you alive through the entire process. That's probably the worst part. The entity keeps you sentient and alive somehow while it's ripping these parts off of you and depriving you of your senses. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed uh, that level. That was absolutely disgusting to read and research and hearing these sounds that there were in the video literally almost made me sick. That is disgusting, but that will be the last thing you hear when you get sent to this level. So hopefully I prepared you. So the game is the name that's been given to a collection of six sublevels in the back rooms. Those sublevels are press start, the stage, game paused, you cheated, game over, and you win. Now I've gone over most of these on the channel in depth in their own video, but I'm gonna be going over them in this video as well. So I'm not gonna be like that YouTuber that makes you go watch a different video. I'm not like that, okay? There is specific new information about all the levels in this video, and you can skip to the timestamp of each one if you wanna see a specific one of them, but we're gonna get into it right now. The game has been classified as a class three difficulty overall, but that also includes the ending sublevel, which is a class zero. So it's really class four or five, let's be real. Anyways, it's one huge level composed of the ones I just talked about. They're arranged in a sort of game that the wanderers that get sent here are forced to participate in. They have to. And at the end of this game, there's supposedly a safe haven type level that can be accessed. More on that later though. The game can be accessed itself by finding a poster that looks like this, scattered throughout the back rooms. No one knows who puts these posters up or how they get there, but in order to get here, you have to follow the directions on one of these posters. And if you want to get to that safe level at the end, you have to complete the game. The game itself has been regarded as some kind of rite of passage recently, a thing that people in the back rooms will do as a last ditch effort to find peace, find a level that they won't get attacked in, find a home. Since, you know, the back rooms are so terrifying, they want to get to this game, want to beat it, and they want to get to the end. But in order for you to understand what the game is, and how you yourself can beat it, let's get into it. The game starts in a place called Press Start. Like I said, I went over this before, but the level itself is an area that's around 400 square feet in size. There are no visible doors or windows or other lighting here, and the entire room is painted a very dark shade of purplish black, with its signature black light and glow-in-the-dark shapes on the walls, on the floors, and the ceilings. Think of like an old arcade or laser tag arena. This part of the level also has that carpet that you'd see in like an old movie theater or arcade, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, the very center of this level is where the stuff begins, because there is an arcade machine, just one of them, with the words press start on top. The appearance of the machine can change based on who's here, just know it's an arcade machine. When you walk up to it, it'll boot up and it'll start a booting sequence that's kind of like a terms of service. You can either accept or deny, which you should probably accept, and the message on the screen reads as follows. I may not know exactly why you're here, but I can think of a few reasons. Perhaps you've been screwed over in some way and you're looking for a second chance to get your life together. Maybe that you've come here to seek fortune, unlike what's ever been witnessed by humankind before. Or perhaps 
You may just be participating for the thrill, and you love a good challenge whenever you find one. What matters is that you have found one of the flyers that I have scattered about the back rooms and have taken up my offer. Ahead of you is a grueling game that will test your skill, your wit, and every last thing that you have ever learned. Do not take the upcoming challenge lightly or play foul, as those that do will face harsh consequences. Only the most worthy will make their way to the end of this game and obtain the prize that I have chosen to offer. For those of you who are ready to play, good luck. You're gonna need it. So yeah, a pretty foreboding, ominous letter there on the screen, but if you press accept, you'll be sent to the next sublevel and next part of the game, which is called the stage. Now the stage is a place that we didn't know existed. This is not an old thing, this is a brand new thing. This is actually what bridges together all of the sublevels in this game. The stage is a large area that takes the appearance of a maze. It seems to be around a mile in the perimeter, and each different person that comes here gets a specialized different maze shape. It's almost like the back rooms knows what wanderers here, who comes here, and how to make the maze tailored specifically for them. The maze consists of very small, cramped hallways that typically have carpet on them. There are also arcade machines randomly placed in these hallways, which kind of clogs it up, but this is where the game itself takes place. And each wanderer, to complete the game, must go and complete a series of quizzes and find a series of tools and objects to help defeat entities that are swarming around this maze. Now, if you remember, we used to think this maze was a part of level you cheated, which isn't technically wrong since you cheated does have a maze, but this is a brand new maze. And this is its own thing. Like I said, it connects all the different sublevels of the game. But now that we know that it's a connector between, you know, level press start and the rest, it's pretty cool. I gotta say, it's a pretty neat thing to find. Anyways, the center of this maze is where the wanderer needs to get to. They have to go through these arcade machines, beating them, completing the challenges on the screen, finding tools and weapons on the ground, and then, you know, defeating the entities that are chasing and flooding these hallways. But at the very center is where a powerful entity known locally as the boss lives. And in order to truly get past the maze and complete this game, you have to get rid of the entity, you know, annihilate it, demolish it, whatever you want to do. And you have to do so by using the objects that you find in the maze. Now, if you're in this maze running around and you try to cheat, or if you try to break through a wall, or you try to exit through a door, the backrooms will consider this as cheating. And you know where cheaters go in the backrooms. I mean, a million of you do, but if you try to cheat, you'll be sent to level you cheated. However, if you do beat the entity at the center, you'll win the game, and you'll be sent on to level you win. Now, level you cheated is a place that most of you, like I said, are familiar with. It's a detainment type zone in this game that you're playing. People get sent here for cheating and tampering and exploiting the game, and this is just a terrible place to be. You can only access level you cheated if the backrooms decides to send you here. So there's like no way you can come here purposely, which is kind of good. The area itself is a very small, featureless room with a slightly open door that leads right to darkness. Beyond that door is a very dangerous version of the maze from earlier, except there are more creatures in it, and the environment is more crumbly, and it's collapsing, and the entities are more aggressive and strange. A lot of the creatures here have never been seen before. It's overall just a weird space. It's like the game is punishing you for being a cheater, which it pretty much is, but if you survive level you cheated for an hour, you'll get a chance to find a token to get sent back to the game to start over. We both know that's probably not happening though. I mean, seriously, it's, it's level you cheated for goodness sakes. There's no way you beat it. But if you somehow do, you might get another chance. So I'm sure you're asking now, what happens if you do unalive while playing the game or in level you cheated or something like that? Well, you actually do get three chances at this game before you're sent to the next sublevel, which is game over. So if you do unalive three times somehow, which I guess you're just really bad at the back rooms if you do that, but if you do that, you'll be sent to game over, which is a series of abandoned concrete halls that lead to nowhere, with strange creatures walking around and hostile entities waiting to attack. The creatures that live here are just very strange, and the level itself is strange. There are random rooms that are placed in weird places, and there are bedrooms and offices that are abandoned. When you get to the level, after failing the game three times, you'll see the game creator entity standing out in front of you, which is these red and blue eyes. You've seen it before. That entity will determine if you tried hard enough in the game 
and based off of their decision, the entity might grant you one more try at the game. But who knows? It's, it's up to them. And they're an entity. So I wouldn't trust them. This place is like a purgatory that can't be escaped. Level you cheated was like a jail sentence that can be escaped, but this place is forever. I mean, you're stuck here in this weird concrete loop because you unalived three times. Honestly, you probably kind of deserve it. If you, if you can't beat this in three times, you're just bad, honestly. I could do it the first try, of course. And lastly, of course, is the famed level you win. Now, this is the place that you get sent to if you complete the game and survive the maze without cheating and without unaliving three times. This place is like an 11 story building. It's absolutely huge inside. It's got different floors for different things. There are supermarkets, offices, nightclubs, lobbies. It's completely safe as well. And it's pretty much the end of the back rooms in a way. You never have to leave. You can get your food and water here and you can interact with other wanderers who beat the game. You can just chill forever in this building if you want to. The building itself is also in the middle of a green field. To me, that's pretty safe, I guess, but also I wouldn't want to do that because I'd rather just continue to explore this infinite you know, reality and not be stuck in a level. But you can do whatever you want to. I'm not going to judge. As I said earlier, the game is a conglomeration of all these levels that I've discussed today put together. Now, we originally didn't know that they were connected like this. We had a theory about it, but we didn't know until that maze, you know, the game place was located. After you press start on the arcade machine, you get into that maze. Now we know it's all interwoven and all connected. Now, if you want to enter the game and try to get to the level you win, you have to find one of those posters advertising it in the back rooms and follow the directions on it. To exit, you can press decline on the press start machine if you don't want to do it again. You can try to cheat and get sent to the level you cheated and then make it out of there, or you can win and just win. But my favorite is that you can find a wooden door on the first floor of you win, and then there's a sign on it labeled goodbye, and if you go through that, you'll be sent to the hub level, where you can go on to explore the back rooms. Honestly, that's probably what I do, because I don't, I don't want to stay in one place forever. Anyways. Backrooms level 86400, or Ad Memento, is classified as a class variable because everything about this level is an anomaly. And it doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to try my best to make it make sense. The level's name, Ad Memento, means to remember, or the process of remembering, which is pretty cool, considering the level gets changed every time time passes. And the level itself has a very interesting layout, to say the least. Now, it is a complete level that gets cut up into different dimensions randomly. So even though there are sub-levels, it's still one big level, just encapsulated in this one massive area. Some of the parts are dangerous and can harm human life, and some of them are safe and can be stayed in. It really all depends where you go. Sounds fun, right? Most of the level, outside of a couple of safe zones, is very glitchy and volatile and dangerous because they can warp constantly. And the only consistent thing throughout all these weird dimensional sub areas is an old looking massive clock tower that you'd see from real life. This clock tower will actually take the shape and design of whatever environment it's in. So if it's in a desert, it'll look like a desert clock and so on and so forth. On this clock, there is a huge circular apparatus type thing that has around 30 notches in a circle on it. Some people think that this circular apparatus with 30 notches controls the level and that each notch is a different setting or a different dimension that you can get sent to. And it really seems like that's the case. In fact, we know it's the case because each time a notch gets passed, you get sent to a different sublevel in a different time period. The five different landscapes. Now, each of the settings or landscapes that appear in this level resemble or looks like some kind of historical or mythological location from an ancient time. These locations are very mystical and magical looking, and they look like they're from real life. And a lot of it has to do with Greek mythology. Sometimes in these landscapes, there will be weird old carvings in structures like trees or in structures like walls or even on the ground in some cases. Obviously, no one can read what these engravings say because no one speaks ancient hieroglyphs, but something has been noticed about how they look. Specifically, that they sorta kinda look like ancient texts from the real life place called Crete, which is an island off of Greece in real life. 
which could mean that these different landscapes I'm about to talk about are different versions of the real life place. Or maybe they are the real life place, but from the past. The Maroon Isle is a landscape that looks like the Greek island Santorini from real life. You've all seen what Santorini looks like. It's the blue domed buildings on the Mediterranean, except this landscape in the back rooms has some big physical changes. Instead of the crystal clear blue water that surrounds the island, the liquid in this level has large amounts of blood in it. Almost to the point where that's all it is, just blood. And there are several weird temples on the island, and the clock tower is here too, except it's red and all viney and stuff. Everything is covered in shades of maroon red. The ground, the buildings, and just everything. Time on the clock passes pretty slow here, comparatively, so it takes around five days for a full rotation of the apparatus to get sent to the next area. The island is pretty bad for your psychological health also, because all the red and the bloody ocean, it just messes you up. And there's also another thing that makes it pretty bad. And that thing is that there are random gut-wrenching screams from deep in the distance on this level. And these screams can give you headaches and psychologically torment you because you're hearing these screams constantly. So the best thing to do is to just try to ignore them and just relax for the five days that you'll be here. When the clock makes a full rotation for five days, you'll be sent to the next setting, which is called the Acropolis. Now this is a strange, distorted version of the real-life Greek Acropolis that you've all seen before. Now this one is a pretty new landscape that's been found, so not much is known about it, but all the structures here look like they're about to break and collapse. Time seems to pass pretty normally here, but the color is not normal. Just like how the first area was red, this area is monochrome black and white. And there's also been some pretty unsettling discoveries in the landscape that I can't even talk about here because YouTube would demonetize me, but they're very gruesome and you should go check it out below if you want to read it. The clock actually has not been seen here yet, but like I said earlier, each different landscape has the clock tower, so it's gotta be here somewhere. Some people think it's one of these marble statues, we don't know. But after a few hours in the Acropolis, you might be sent to the next setting, which is called the Eternal Desert. Now this one takes the physical appearance of the real-life Sahara Desert from Africa, which is a massive desert in the northern part of the continent. Now, unlike the two first areas that I talked about, this one is fully infinite and has no borders. The landscape has a dark and gloomy sky that looks like it's always about to rain, and there's also chances of huge wind gusts just blowing up sandstorms everywhere. And the sandstorms can be dangerous. Some parts of this landscape are entirely made out of quicksand, which can instantly suck you in and trap you, and you could suffocate in the sand. The clock in this landscape is visible just on the horizon as far as you can see, and it takes the appearance of a big sandstone pillar. Sometimes in the sand of this area, you can see gears or skeletons of fish slightly buried underneath it, which might mean that the sands could have been the bottom of the ocean at one time, or something else, I don't know. But after a few hours on this level, the clock will make a full rotation, and you will be sent to the next setting, which is called the Twilight Mountains. And this is a unique one. This specific zone is made up of different mountain chains from real life. The Alps, Mount Olympus from Greece, the Pyrenees, the Caucasus. It's like all these mountain chains got thrown together and mixed up and are put here. And together, they form craggy, sharp peaks that look impossibly tall. Like, taller than Mount Everest tall. Huge. There's barely any light here, just kind of a soft glow that comes from the clock tower here, which is located on top of the tallest mountain peak. It looks kind of like a stone statue, but it is the clock on the zone. Around the mountains, there is a thick forest of pine trees, and it's always dark and gloomy and foggy there as well. And some pretty dangerous entities like to lurk here, which I'll get into in the entity section, but you definitely should not trifle too deep into the woods. After the clock ticks again, you will be sent to the last known landscape, which is called the Tartarus. Now this thing is a huge mystical cave type zone, kind of like one from Greek lore that's said to be underneath Crete, the real island. 
Because in Greek mythology, supposedly underneath Crete there's this massive opening to the underworld, and this is sort of what that looks like. The cave is swelteringly hot, and magma flows through the floor in some parts and drops from the ceiling in some parts, but the good news is, time flows normally, so you won't have to be in here for too long, just around 8 hours for the clock to tick again. Which will probably seem longer than that because of how hot it is and you'll be uncomfortable. And sometimes beside the clock there could be seen a physical animal that resembles the real life or mythology Cerberus, which is the guardian of the underworld. And it's this massive three-headed dog type thing that's actually there, like it's in this area. So avoid that. As you can see, all these settings and landscapes seem to be tied in with magic and mystical stuff full of mythology for some reason. The question we all have is, why? Now there are a couple of entities that live throughout these different landscapes. The first one is called the Shades, and these are those that I said were hiding in the mountain area, in the Twilight Peaks. And these are shape-shifting type creatures that look like shadows. All of them are inky black looking, and they're very different from each other in how they're aggressive, or how they're nice, or how they treat you. But some of them can be very dangerous and shapeshift into other things that can hurt you or bring you harm in some way. The true purpose is unknown, but it's pretty terrifying to think that they exist. And the last entity that's been seen throughout these different landscapes is called the Automaton or the Automaton. These creatures kind of look like humanoid machines with gears and wires sticking out of them. There are also carvings and words on their bodies that are in languages that we can understand. They're pretty aggressive and they're strong, and they normally hide in the Maroon Isle as well as the other landscapes that have been found. Both of these entities hide and lurk in the shadows and they try to hurt you or lead you to harm. It's just very dangerous overall and you should avoid them at all costs. To enter this level, you can noclip through anything in all of the back rooms while holding something that's related to time, like a watch or a clock or something, and you could be sent here. And to exit, you have to go up to one of the clocks that's throughout any of these landscapes, and you need to go to the base of it and then open the door and then go inside, and you'll be sent back to one of the first nine levels instantly. So yeah, I want to hear all of your thoughts on this level, and I want to hear your theories on why it's so tied into Greek mythology and Greece specifically. I think it's so cool that each time the clock ticks and makes a rotation that you get changed or sent to a different level. It just, that's, that's a crazy cool concept, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Backrooms level 990 is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe and unsecure and has a small but dangerous entity count. The level itself is nicknamed the Soundless Subterranean, which is such a cool name by the way, that's, that's cool. And it's physically a pretty cool description. The level appears to be a large cave network that has winding curvy hallways, big open caverns, and rooms that are intercut with some old mine shafts. All over the walls and the ceilings and the floor, there are cobwebs and moss and different kinds of algae growing, and some parts of the cavern caverns are flooded, but they are not just flooded with normal water, they're flooded with liquid pain. Liquid pain is a red liquid in the back rooms that normally hurts you, if you didn't know. Except this liquid pain here is pretty safe to the touch, just don't stay in it for long. The caves that are flooded with it can be anywhere from 10 to 20 meters, or 32 to 65 feet deep. But some of them are even deeper than that, which is really crazy. The caves are not very safe to walk through because they can go from just being a normal cave to being a huge cavern instantly. Or they can go from being just a normal cave to a really claustrophobic tight tunnel instantly. None of it has any reasoning, it just happens like that. And on top of all the stuff I just talked about, there are random mine shafts that intersect into tunnels and caverns here. These shafts are made out of regular wood, but it's all really decayed and really cracked. In fact, the mine shafts are so old and broken that they can just randomly collapse at any time with just the slightest touch, which would be pretty bad if you were walking near or walking under one. 
The shafts sometimes have railways on them that go over into the actual caves themselves. And there's even some minecarts that have been seen there as well that are full of coal and other types of ore. But it doesn't make any sense that the carts are here because there's no way that humans got here with those carts since some of the things are so claustrophobic you couldn't have even fit the cart through them. So who knows? Just like some of the other levels of the back rooms, this level has some non-Euclidean effects that just make it dangerous. However, these effects aren't really noticeable until a few miles back in the cave, but once you get back there, you'll notice the pathway is changing and glitching and folding on top of themselves, and you'll sometimes even be going around in circles even though you're going straight. This level is almost fully unexplored because of how many passages and caverns it has, and there's no way to say for sure how big it is, however, some of it has been mapped out, but this could be just a small chunk, who knows. But what is known is that it gets pitch black in the caverns of this level, and some spots are literally so dark that the flashlights you have don't even help, like they don't even light anything at all up. These pitch black areas are the most enigmatic and weird parts of the level. Radio waves and GPS stuff only partially work here, but if you do use a GPS to see your location, it will actually say that you're in Slovenia, which is weird because why would a backrooms level say that I'm in Europe? Strange. Compasses aren't even useful here either because the needle never points the right way, so you never truly know what direction you're going in. Pretty much nothing works as it should here, which is one of the reasons it's truly dangerous. Now level 990 is actually really cold, and sometimes there's a fog that will roll through the tunnels and caverns. The ambient noise of the level is a relaxing water trickle with a slight echo. But sometimes that peaceful, relaxing background can be interrupted by really strange disturbances. These disturbances are audio hallucinations and an entity that I'll talk about later. But these audio hallucinations are thought to come from entities deep inside the level. A weird thing that's been seen far into the caves are a few random windows. These windows are dusty and old looking, and they're actually in the side of the rock walls of the cave, like they're shoved into them. But you can see through them, and it looks like there's hills and flowers and a sunset behind the windows. These are not full grown window entities that we know of, because they don't try to eat you. It literally just looks like there's the world, the earth, on the other side of this glass window. No matter how much the glass is broken on one of these things, the image of the hills and flowers never changes. Which means it's gotta be some kind of entity, right? I mean... <sighs> Speaking of entities, there are a few confirmed ones, like facelings, that have been seen wearing old explorer uniforms and hats with flashlights. There's also been a few death moths that have been seen in the huge caverns. But the level exclusive entity is called a Ravager Ape. Now these things are found deep into the caverns and caves of this level and they need to be avoided at all cost. I repeat, they need to be avoided. So a Ravager Ape is kind of like a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot from real life, just way more aggressive. These apes hunt humans, and they're very dangerous because they can seemingly no-clip through walls and floors anytime they want to. So one could literally be in a passageway over to the left of you, sense you, and then jump through the wall to get you. Cool. The good news is, since they're pretty big, they can't get into small parts of the cave, so you could probably just run into a tiny hole and escape them. There are currently no colonies in this level, except there was one that tried to build one, but different events, like falling into liquid pain or falling into a deep cavern and never being seen again, made the group lose too many members, so now there's no one. To enter this level, you can find a hole to jump in in level 100 to be sent here, or you can noclip into a red substance found on level 15 to be sent here. Most of the entrances listed involve nature or the woods in some kind of way, which I find pretty interesting. And to exit the level, you have to find a ladder on a mineshaft in this level and start climbing up it to presumably be sent back to the level you came from. But no one knows for sure because the people just disappear when they're climbing the ladder. So yeah, a huge cave system with random caverns, drop-offs, flooded corridors, and a home to giant apes who hunt humans for food. Sounds great to me.
So this level is classified as a class variable, of course, because of all the varying levels of safety and hazards that can happen. The entire level looks like a house, but it's not just a regular house, it's a massive, expansive house. The level seems to be different in layout and in difficulty for everybody that comes here, but it can all randomly change, so there's no use in trying to make it an exact level classification. It can be safe one second, and then dangerous the next. There still is a basic outline for how the level is made up though, and it's got a few certain rooms, and those rooms are actually living rooms, bathrooms, hallways, kitchens, bedrooms, and there could even be a rogue outdoor outside area. But those are the different types of spaces that we'll talk about in this video, and you can randomly get sent to any of them by just being here and walking around. Sometimes it's a random teleportation, sometimes you'll open a door and there'll be a different place there. It's so random that you can never tell. But now, I'm gonna get into the explanation of the different rooms. So the living rooms of this level tend to be on the empty side. It seems like each of them will have a TV, a few couches, and maybe a rocking chair or two. You know, just the normal stuff. The living rooms are also hot spots for entities on this level. Which is kind of bad because there's only two rooms that are hot spots and living rooms are one of them. Entities like skin stealers thrive here, as well as some other unknown shadowy figures. These rooms connect to other rooms through hallways, but these hallways can shift and move randomly, so there's no guarantee you'll ever go back to the same room you were in. Pretty much, you just gotta throw all knowledge and all physics that you know and all science that you know to the wind because none of it is gonna apply here. After the living rooms, there are the bedrooms, which which are easily, and I mean easily, the strangest parts of this level. So for all of them, they have a weird 80s, 90s liminal space vibe, and they all seem to have perfectly white furniture in them, like desks and chairs and bookshelves and bed frames, that type of thing. All of it's white. And in every bedroom, there is a TV somewhere that's playing nothing but white static. Like, that's all it can play, just white static. Every account of this level's bedrooms has all those things, the white furniture and the TV playing white static, but at the same time, all the decorations besides those things look different. There are always doors in these bedrooms too, but if you open up one of those doors and walk out, it'll turn you around and you'll just walk back into the same room again. Each time you do that though, some weird stuff might happen. Like if there was a pin on the desk, then it might be gone when you walk back in the room. Or if there was a book on the floor, it might be put on a shelf when you walk back into the room. Just weird stuff like that. These bedrooms are also full of strange paranoia feelings. So it always will feel like something's watching you or waiting for you to come into sight. Some people theorize that there's an entity that hides under the beds or in a closet or in the shadows, but who knows. The kitchens are the next part of the level and they're also very strange. They're usually made out of all wooden materials, so the cabinets and tables and all that stuff will be old looking wood. And these areas are also decorated in a pre-2000s vibe. The kitchens are all really hot and you'll start sweating just by getting here. And they're hot because all the ovens and microwaves are on full blast constantly, and you can't change it or take it off or anything. The doors that would normally lead to a different room or a pantry or another just area in the house in these kitchens will just lead to the exact copy of that same kitchen that you're in. So you'll be in a place that looks like this, and then you open the door, walk to the next place, and it'll be the exact same place again. Great. The lights in the ceilings are also very dangerous because they can get so hot that they could literally roast you alive. Literally. There's also a strange entity that hides in these kitchens that hunts down the prey that gets weakened from the heat. Uh, so be ready for that. The level also has bathrooms. Of course it does. In the bathrooms, there is a constant sound of water dripping, almost like there's a pipe that's broken or something. The water in the toilets and in the sinks and everywhere is freezing cold. It's literally so cold that it feels like it has ice in it, but it doesn't. And this area is the second and last hot spot for entities. The first hot spot was the living room, and this one is the second one, and it's very strange because the entities here are very different from normal entities. There are regular ones like hounds and clumps, but there are a few weird cases of people seeing things underneath a stall door or seeing heads pop under a stall door as well. Sometimes people will open one of those doors and they'll get taken in by the entity behind it. 
or dragged out from under it by an entity on the other side. That's all we know about the bathrooms though, but it's enough for me to know that I would never go there. The hallways of this level are also an area, I guess, but they're just a bunch of intertwining, looping, non-Euclidean hallways that seemingly lead to infinite parts of the level. Now, the hallways themselves are kind of like hotel ones, I guess you could say, but all the lights are strange colors, like yellow and red and green, that kind of thing. There are also doors that lead to more hallways hallways and more hallways that lead to doors and all of it just gets really confusing really really fast the last discovered area is the outdoor area that i hinted at earlier and this part is very rare to get to and it always seems to happen accidentally like no one ever purposely goes here they just get sent here but it looks like a dark road with these weird looking trees completely surrounding it and this is also a hot spot for entities apparently and they seem to just roam the roads looking for something to eat and things like smilers are common here there is one last place that just got discovered and it's kind of like a basement area but there is no information on it and this is the only picture we have for it and it just looks like an unfinished basement let me know in the comments what you think the basement might do there's no info on it but i want to hear your theories to enter this level you have to come from the previous one level 611.3 and to exit you can open a door in one of the hallways that glows red or you can make it to the outdoor area and no clip through the road uh good luck you're gonna need it Level negative 439 of the back rooms, aka Schrodinger's Closet, has been given a classification of undetermined due to the many mysterious properties that surround it, as well as unknown information that has not been documented about entities that lurk inside this level. So obviously the level's name, Schrodinger's Closet, is a reference to the psychological scenario of Schrodinger's Cat. Now, if you've never heard about that or anything, I'm going to go ahead and summarize it right here really fast before I hop in the explanation of the level. In this psychological scenario, there is a box. And inside the box, you put a cat and a harmful poisonous substance. Then you close the box and you lock it and you seal it. At this point, the cat is then exposed to that substance, but you won't know if the cat is dead or alive until you open up the box and see. So until it's opened, the cat is simultaneously alive and not. And until it's removed from the box, it's in this state of limbo where it's alive but not. That's the entire thought experiment, the psychology behind it, and that is pretty much the same thing that this level follows. And this backrooms level directly references that concept, and to my knowledge, it's actually the only level to do so, which I think is pretty interesting. But with that intro out of the way, let me get into the level's details and explain all the lore that surrounds it. Level negative 439 begins in a small, dark, cramped room. Inside this room, there are no features of note that stick out. The only thing that you can see is a strange, intimidating door right in front of you. The door is illuminated by an unknown source of light coming from underneath it, but other than that door and the light shining through, the rest of the room that you're currently in is very, very dark. It's pitch black, and there is no distinct features or windows or layouts or anything else. It is a small, cramped room. The temperature in this room is ambient. It's not hot, it's not cold, but you feel very limbo. You feel very strange. There's no sounds to speak of, nothing coming from anywhere, and even the sounds you make fall completely silent. The only thing you'll be able to hear and feel is your own breath and your own heartbeat. Also, there's no lights inside this room, and no matter what light sources you bring, like it's a flashlight or a phone, that also won't work. Now, the darkness in this little tiny room has been described as abrasive and aggressive, and it feels like it's judging you staring at you, suffocating you. And even though there's actually no creature around you, the entire darkness embodies being alive. It feels like it's a thing that it's so dark and so oppressive. The darkness has no eyes, but it tends to see everything. Moving beyond this very dark, small room, there's literally nothing for you to explore or move to or get to except that closet door right in front of you. Now, the room you'll start in is like 10 feet by 10 feet. It's very, very small, and it's just tall enough to where you can stand up inside of it. So you're going to want to try to explore on, and this closet door be the only way out. It naturally leads you to explore what's behind the door. This closet, of course, is Schrodinger's closet. 
Now, it is not recommended that you venture deep into it, or into it at all for that matter, no matter how intriguing it seems, no matter how alluring it is, but you do have to open it up if you want to get out of the level, so just get that out of your mind. Don't be too scared to, but also don't go too deep in. If you do open the door, the following is what you will be greeted with. Swinging the creaking wooden door open, you'll hear the sound of a hollow and guttural deep rattle, a sort of rattle, if you will, and you'll feel this immediate gust of freezing cold air hit your face and skin. The rattling noise from deep within inside the closet will shake your bones and will frighten you. The cold air has also been described as death's kiss. There's an overwhelming and overbearing stench that also hits your nose when you open this closet, and it smells similar to mothballs and mold and iron. There's a dark and dank, pungent odor and feeling of decay and rot emanating from deeper within inside the closet, the source of which is unknown from where you're at. The cold air inside this closet makes that smell even worse. It makes it sharper, like a knife stabbing your nose over and over. Opening the door fully, the creaking will end, and you'll be greeted with a huge expanse of shelves and doors and cabinets that sprawl out in a skinny hallway for as far as the eye can see. This closet is much bigger than a regular closet, of course. Not wider, but longer. And on each side of the hallways, there could be shelving, there could be other doors that lead to small rooms, and things of that nature. This furniture, these shelves and everything, have nothing on top of them. They're all completely barren and completely empty. And the closet is very dark, just like the outside room, but it is very dimly lit in some of the places as well, from these very dingy lights. Darkness covers every single outreach of this closet, and that horrid, putrid smell of just rust clouds the air no matter where you go. The air feels like it's a weapon against you. You can kind of feel it in your eyes and in your nose and in your hands. The second you open the closet door and you walk inside fully, that door will then slam itself shut right behind you and lock you in this closet, essentially sealing your fate for now. You can't break down the door, you can't smash it, you can't tear off the handle. None of that seems to work. You are sealed inside of Schrodinger's closet. Once that door is shut, the level's gravity sort of creates this vacuum that pulls you deeper and deeper into the claustrophobic abyss of this closet. Some force, natural or unnatural, just begins to compel you to walk forward, and it pushes that smell of rot and maggots in your nose. It feels like you're underwater, that it's so hard and difficult to breathe through whatever this nasty smell is. And as long as you keep walking deeper and deeper into this closet, you are what the level wants. You're neither alive nor dead. Thus, making this level survival rate an exact 50-50, and also thus fulfilling the prophecy of its name, Schrodinger's Closet. You're not guaranteed to live, and you're not guaranteed to unalive. This closet will continue to generate as long as you walk forward, and eventually it'll get more and more claustrophobic, as if it wasn't skinny enough already, just a few feet wide, but it'll get shorter, and it'll get more tight, and the shelvings will become more tight as well. As I mentioned, the only other things inside this closet are the disgusting carpeted floors beneath you, random doors that can open up to small, cramped, weird rooms that definitely shouldn't be there, and shelves that are empty. It's thought that the shelves might symbolize the brain of somebody, and the emptiness of the shelves might symbolize the lack of thoughts and the lack of hope while inside this closet. After an unknown amount of time of walking down the very claustrophobic and very short and tight hallway, you'll begin to notice the corpses of other beings and things on the floor around you. Are they alive or are they not? You hear strange things emitting that rattle noise all over the floor and all over the walls, but it's too dark and you don't really care enough to find out what it is. Now don't be frightened though, because there is a way to exit this level, you just have to stay very aware. The only way to do so is to resist the urge to walk deeper into the closet and make sure you stay near the door. As I said, the door slams shut when you walk in, but after about five minutes of you being inside the closet, it cracks itself back open very slightly. Once this happens, you have a few seconds to run and burst out of the room, opening the door and getting back to that small black space area. And that is the only time and the only way that you can even escape Schrodinger's closet. It only opens once and it never opens again after those few seconds. If you miss it, you essentially seal your fate and you'll be a victim of the closet forever. If for some reason you want to enter this level, 
Maybe to see what it's about, maybe to see if you can explore your own mind and psyche while exploring the closet or whatever. You can enter by getting lost in the darkness of level 6, and you'll find yourself here in that small cramped room at the beginning. To exit, you gotta do what I just said, walk inside the closet. Once you get inside that dark, cramped room again, you'll be sent back out to wherever you came from. Now that's all easier said than done, of course, because this closet has that ethereal draw to it. It has this ability to kind of lure people deeper and deeper, almost to where it's irresistible. But you can't give in to that and you cannot go deeper because like I said, you gotta get out using the door that opens for just a few seconds. So level 479 is the 480th level inside of the back rooms, and it's been given a classification of class 5 for it being unsafe, unsecure, and infested with creatures. More so, just creature. The level itself is very, very enigmatic and very strange, and it's not really even like a usual level inside the back rooms. In fact, you can't even purposefully enter this level at all. It seems to exist outside of the bound boundaries of what we know to be the back rooms, which is saying something because the typical boundaries in the back rooms don't even exist. So this is outside of that already. Anyways, all entrances to this place have been accidental, thus getting an accurate description of its layout and its features and stuff is difficult to say the least. The level causes memory loss and communication issues to people who get sent and escape, so details that we do have are oftentimes filled in by their minds and imagination, which means they might not be fully accurate. But the general consensus of survivors that came from this level have said that at its most basic form, level 479 is a rusty, dirty, dark, and very humid building. Some say that the building is an old prison, some say it's an old abandoned hospital, some say it's a prison hospital, but all descriptions really emphasize and point out how old and in disrepair it is. Is. It is completely dilapidated and is completely getting destroyed in most areas and most of it is collapsing around you. There's no natural light sources either, which is a recipe for disaster for anyone that finds themselves trapped inside. This rusty old building is essentially a house of horrors though, as I'll explain later on down in this video. Encounters with level 479 typically last for one to two hours at max. That's that's it, which is good because any more than that, and I don't think we'd have any survivors that came out of the level. But it seems like the building and the level is just so unstable that it really cannot contain people in it for longer than that time period. Now, the reason the descriptions and the encounters of the level are so elusive is because uh, very few people have been sent here period. And the state of their mental health and physical health when they come back pretty much makes it impossible to gather information. So now I want to get into information on why that might happen. What messes these people up? What causes them to be so mentally ruined, for lack of a better word? And I want to get into what might happen if someone finds themselves stuck in this level. It is estimated that 18 wanderers total find themselves stuck in the level each year, which is a pretty low amount. And that's pretty good because most people that get stuck here don't make it like I said a bunch but due to this level and its properties survivors that exit it always end up with some sort of unfixable and irreversible brain damage and that's where the level gets its name me after the lobotomy the damage is typically in the temporal lobe of the wanderer which makes communication either hard or very impossible it literally takes away their ability to talk and to express emotions the internal danger is very very serious just by being in the level. And for the first five days after you exit, it can either be extremely mild or get worse as you go. Most cases though, after about a week of escaping the level, a survivor might just be in a fully vegetative state, unable to talk, unable to move, and unable to eat or sleep until they just fade away. That's in worst case scenarios though, there are actual people that have survived, but those are even rarer. Most people that make it out of the level aren't even hurt physically, just mentally and internally with their brain. And it's not psychological, it seems to be that their physical brain tissue is also messed up. But what actually happens to them? How do they end up with this brain damage? How are they unable to talk and think and stuff? Let me get into that right now. Viewer discretion is advised, by the way. This is disgusting, so don't say I didn't warn you. 
uh, you, you have the Berkeley warning, viewer discretion. Most survivors from this level mention something called Entity 479-1. These creatures are only described as the following. They are very vaguely humanoids with brownish and blackish auras around them and wide statures. The entities are very obscure and very unknown because it's so dark in this level and everything happens so fast, you can't even see what's going on really. Their motivations, or if they cause this mental damage to victims, is unknown. Although it's, it's assumed that these creatures are what causes that tissue damage and the brain damage. Until the year 2027, no actual photographic evidence existed of this entity, until an unnamed wanderer, who was found walking around a random level in the back rooms, seemingly dazed and just off, you could tell something was wrong with him. They had a picture of this entity on their phone. The wanderer was taken into care and was still slightly able to talk, and he gave this account of surviving the level and running away from this creature, and then he showed this image of the entity as proof of it. The wanderer's condition would then get worse and worse over that next week, and they eventually became non-verbal and then just decayed away over the next weeks until they didn't make it. The following symptoms have been observed in people who have survived the level and the entity 479-1. Impaired sensory processing, reduced talking ability, inability to focus, and short-term memory loss. All of these are very common traits of individuals who have experienced this level and interacted with this entity therein. Now, some people, like I said, do heal from the effects, and only about 12% of the people that get sent here eventually go into vegetative states or comatose states. So you have like an 82% chance. It is still unknown what this mysterious entity does to its victims or how it does it because it's, it would be really hard to inflict that sort of damage without like cutting open something. Do you know what I'm saying? And there's never physical injuries on the wanderers that leave. So it could be that the entity scares the people so bad that it just causes their brain to crack. Or maybe the entity does something where it goes in the wanderer's mouth or nose and that's how it gets to the brain. We don't know. It just seems to happen. Whatever it does, it makes the victims nonverbal, delusional, and sometimes vegetative. To enter the level, like I said, it's random, and no purposeful entrance has ever been found, and it's thought that you couldn't even go there if you wanted to. There's no warning signs or anything to look for, you'll just randomly get sent here after walking around one day. To exit, you have to be in there for an unspecified amount of time, and then you'll just randomly get sent back to the level you came from, whenever the level decides. You have no choice, the level does it for you. If that happens, of course, you will never be the same again. Mentally, physically, none of it. This level constantly scares wanderers in the back rooms, because they sit there and they never know if they're going to be picked to get sent to it. No one knows what controls it, no one knows how they're chosen, but whoever gets sent here, it could be their end, you know? This old hospital, this strange enigmatic shadow creature, this decaying, humid, rusty, smelling atmosphere. It is really the stuff of nightmares and I would not want to get sent here. This level physically and mentally ruins normal people by essentially lobotomizing their brains without opening their head so that it has to go through their like their nose, their mouth or something. So if you have any theories on what the entity does to these people, let me know in the comments. I don't want to get into it because I don't want to get demonetized. But if you find yourself in this level, Godspeed to you. There's nothing I can help you with. Hello everybody, thank you for watching until the end of the video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. I know you all love these long hour videos just so you can turn it on in the background do all that stuff so i'm delivering with this video and i really appreciate you watching until the end if you want to see more of me i have another channel called spoogly it's where i do deep dives and more like mature style videos it's doing really well right now so thank you so much for that the link will be in the description below also go follow me on instagram and twitter if you want to catch up with me and just kind of see what the old brookster's doing uh usually it's nothing Thank you for your awesome and amazing uh, support and comments and likes, and I just really appreciate all of you. Uh, with all that said, I will see you in the next video. Peace and love. Bye-bye.